What's going on, obscure mic people? It's me, The Bark. The Bark. Maybe that's the name, The Bark. I like how most of you actually call me Bark. Some of you call me uh, by my other name, my my God-given, mother-given name. But I like the fact that I've got this moniker to a small number of people on the tube of you. So today, I've got a vintage microphone for you from none other than Rode. Rode. That's what she says. That's what she did. That was in her past, she rode. Ha <laughs> ha. He rode. Anyone can ride, but this is rode. The NT2, not the NT2A, the NT2, condenser, multi pattern microphone from Rode. Released in the 90s, discontinued not long after. The NT2A was a second version with a lot more pattern options, such and such and such. And uh, we got this thing, and it's U87 looking glory with the head basket all super fine meshed out and all that jazz. But let's talk about this microphone real quick. Hard to find. I got it on offer up with a an Alesis IO2 Express interface, which surprisingly still has drivers that work for Windows, and it works quite well. The gain, not so great on it, but for a throw-in, for this mic, which I got pretty cheap, it's, it's not so bad. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at the mic and then we'll do some tests and stuff. All right, let's take a look at the microphone. Looks like your average condenser, multi-pattern, omnidirectional or cardioid. XLR port on the bottom. Got a uh, low cut filter, flat and a 10 decibel pad switch on the back. Check out that grill, very U87-like. Soft, I don't want to press it hard, because it's soft. Got some good heft to it, very normal. Let's go ahead and throw some plosives and such into this mic. I will say before I even do the tests, uh, this mic is a, is a bit grating on my ears. It is very top heavy and grainy and just, I'm not digging it. I'm not digging it. I'll say that right off the bat, but processing could change a lot. It could come through on the video sounding better. I just think it sounds way too top heavy. There's not a warm low end and I just, I, I'm really not feeling this. And I was kind of surprised to turn it on and feel that way because I thought it's Rode. You know, they make good mics. Granted, this is an older mic. I think it was made in China. This is before they moved their operations over to Australia. And I just, I don't think I love it. I know that the original NT1 is not as good as the updated NT1, or maybe even as good as the NT1A. High self noise, just not the greatest mic out there. So the NT2, I'm not totally surprised I don't love it at first, but let's go on with the video and just find out. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickle pineapple pizza. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickle pineapple pizza. And... When you get right on top of the mic, this is what it sounds like. Proximity effect is a lot better than when I was back here. And I'm not that far off the mic. I'm like four inches off the mic, but when I get up here, it changes drastically. It sounds more like it should, in my opinion. So we'll have to see. Let's go ahead and do some off-axis rejection, turning 90 degrees. Talking into it at 90, 180, 90 again. Slowly back around to the front of the NT2. Let's also be quiet here. I've got the gain on the Rodecaster Pro set to an 18, which is kind of my sweet spot for condensers. And then my fader is about in the middle, unity-ish, unity-ish. Let's go ahead and be real quiet, see if we can hear some self noise from the mic. I feel like I hear a tiny bit, so yeah, nothing bad, nothing horrible, but I feel like I do hear it just slightly. So, and my fridge is not on in the studio. There's nothing else on in here. Granted, there could be electronic interference for something from something, but I doubt it. Let's clicky clack on the keyboard so you can hear what it's like if you're streaming, gaming, playing with computer stuff. All right, let's go ahead and throw some processing on this thing and see if it does anything better. Again, when you get up on, there's a certain point here where I think it sounds good with proximity. So if I wanted to stay this close on it, 
I like it more, but as soon as I get off of it a little bit, it's top heavy, no low end warmth. I, I just got to get on top of it. On top of it, I think it sounds a lot better, but I still don't love it. Let's throw processing on. All right, now we've got compression, deesser, and a big bottom on the microphone and a high pass filter built into the Rodecast Pro in case a big old loud ass redneck truck comes by. <laughs> Why, folks? I'm sure some people that watch this channel have big trucks that are louder than hell. Could you tell me why? To, to, make, to make a vehicle louder, there's two reasons to me. One, you're into hot rods that are loud. I'm fine with that. I hear a Chevelle that's loud. It's cool. But I see a 2020 Dodge Ram that wakes my kids up in the middle of the night, and I'm like, that's not cool. That's little pecker syndrome. Anyways, with the processing on... I think it sounds a lot better. I still don't love it. I still think it's top heavy. I still think it has this sizzle and the the, the S's aren't so great. Even with the DSer on, let's turn that off real quick. DSer is now off and I just feel like I get a lot of Yeah. I don't like this mic a whole lot. Kind of surprised by it. Let's go ahead and do some pattern work. Right now it's on the cardioid. I'm going to turn it over to omnidirectional with the processing on. Now we are in omnidirectional and it should pick up just about no matter where I'm at on the microphone and it does, but it's just not uh, ideal either. And I think that sounds just kind of lame. Let's turn it back to cardioid. Back on cardioid sounds a lot better. I don't know, folks. I don't know. Not impressed. I'm not going to engage the 10 decibel pad or the low cut filter. One, because this thing needs all the bass on the low end that it can get. Unless you're right on top of it. Unless you're right on top of it, then it sounds, you know. But I'm not I'm not impressed with this road. Not at all. Uh, there's not a lot of videos out there on it. Probably because nobody kept it. I mean, it, it's, it's okay-ish. And again, it could come through on the video and sound great. But to my ears, I am not a fan. I'm not a fan. This one's up on reverb. Come have at it. I don't need it. I got no use for it. I think I like the TM1 from Behringer better than I like this, surprisingly. So, Rode NT2, it's out. Processing still on, just so you know. I'll turn it off one more time so you can hear. Drop off and bass. As soon as I took that big bottom off, thin as could be. Again, unless you're right on top. This one's going to get the red light. It's getting the red light before I go. It's been a while since I handed one out, but it's getting one. I don't care for this mic. If you like it, let me know. If you didn't like it, let me know. If you have anything to say about anything, just let me know, bro. Let me know. Holla at your boy. Don't know where this is coming from. Just a little bit of excitement getting in front of the camera again. Obscure Mics is out. The NT2 is out from Rode. Peace out.